this video is going to be about buying cable rope and preparing it for use underground. It's absolutely fine to buy cable rope off the reel and chuck it straight into a bag and take it caving. But there are just one or two little things that will make the use of this caving rope a little bit better underground if you just follow these a few simple, easy steps. So this is about preparing your rope to go underground on a caving trip. So here we are at one of the uh, UK's top outdoor pursuits retailers. I buy all my kit from a decent little outdoor shop where I can get expert advice. Don't buy it from a huge faceless organisation. Buy it from a nice little shop where they've got experts in all the kind of activities you want to undertake. So here we are in the outdoor shop and I'm collecting my pre-ordered rope. It's a, a decent quality outdoor shop. Small experts that know what they're talking about with their kit, who actually use the equipment themselves. Not a big faceless organisation. So I've pre-ordered my rope because caving rope is sold on the reel and you can buy it by the meter or the yard depending on which country you're shopping in. So I've actually asked for 30 meters of 10.5 millimeter rope and 30 meters of 9 millimeter rope. And what I'm going to do now is take this away and prepare it for my caving. And also what I'm buying as well is some gear marking tape and some shrink wrap which we'll show you how to use later on. So here we go, nice big box of brand new rope for us to go and play with. Right, off home to go and get the rope prepared for our caving trip for later on. Now we're home, we've got our new piece of rope. So I flate it out on the floor. It's perfectly safe to take this rope and take it caving. No problem with that at all. There's just a couple of hints and tips though that might be useful for you as cavers. So here's how to treat your rope. Get the rope out and what we're going to do is we're going to wash the rope. So if I took the rope as a pile and shoved it into the washing machine, all the time it's gone around a few thousand times, you're going to end up with a complete rat's nest of rope. So what we're going to do is plait the rope. That's pretty simple. Find the two ends, tie them together in an overhand knot, Cast those to one side, pull all of the rope through. We now have the middle of the rope. So you've got the two ends and the middle of the rope. Now take all of it and tie it into a big overhand knot. Now what we're going to do is we're going to plait the rope. You can plait the rope in a single line, which would take ages if you've got a big rope, a 100 meter rope. So what we're going to do is we're quartering the rope, putting it into four lines, and plaiting all three together, or sorry, all four together. And some people call it plaiting, and some people call it chaining, whatever you want to do. So this is how we chain or plait our rope. Put a loop in, then put a bite through the loop bite through the loop and continue. So just to cover that again, put a loop in with all four cords and put a bite through that loop and then we put a bite through that bite and a bite through that bite and a bite through that bite all the way down the rope. What we've got now is a very quick way of tidying our rope away ready to go into the washing machine. And the last one, just pull it through completely. So I've now got a 30 meter rope and a fairly neat side of chains, which can go into the washing machine, go through a wash cycle, and come out and be fairly easy to undo. So if I put it through in a pile, you'd end up with a rat's nest. So why are we gonna wash our rope? Well, there's a couple of reasons, really. Um, caving rope is nylon, and different manufacturers have different ways of making their caving rope. And some of those caving ropes shrink. They shrink when they are wet. So we wet it by putting it through the washing machine and it pre-shrinks the rope. And also what it does is it washes out any kind of manufacturing chemicals that are within the rope. Uh, there are silicons in there which make the rope very slippy in the manufacturing process. 
Um, and that's not so useful when we're actually using it in a caving situation, because we want a nice rope with a lot of grip on it so we can ascend and descend under control. So when you wash it, you pre-shrink the rope and you remove any manufacturing chemicals. And that's it, ready to go. Okay, so as I said, you can either wash your rope or you can soak your rope. So some people take the, the household bath, lay the rope in there and let it soak for 24 hours. That's no problem. Some people do it in a, in a butt of water outside the house. But it's okay to put it through the washing machine, providing you're using the washing machine correctly. So you've seen me plait my rope. Wash. Into the washing machine we go. And then what I'm going to do is make sure I find a very delicate wash. So something with a very low spin, very low spin, we don't want high spins because it's going to stretch the rope, and very cool temperature, it's almost cold, certainly no more than 30 degrees. So probably the simplest thing to do is to put it on hand wash or delicates. You can put a little tiny touch of soap powder in the top. You only need to put a little bit in just to break the surface tension of the water. And on the subject of, of the powder, you want to use pure soap flakes. Don't use anything with uh, biological properties in it like that at all. Just use pure soap. It's just enough to sort of sweeten the water up and take out any manufacturing products for you. And we'll just whack it through on a really gentle process. And it'll take about 25 minutes and you've got a pre-shrunk clean rope ready to mark up for later on. Okay, washing machine's finished. We have our ropes wash we purchased earlier on. That's the 9mm, and here's the 10mm. Notice how, after going round and round and round in a washing machine a few thousand times, the rope is still in a fairly untangled state. And there's lots of surface area of the rope exposed, which means when it comes to drying, I can just hang those up and dry them. So let's go and do that now. We're now going to dry our ropes. Dry your ropes in a place that is essentially going to look after the rope. So we want to make sure that it's out of UV light. There's no point in holding your rope up in the daylight for day after day after day to dry it, because UV light isn't that good on ropes. A day or so isn't going to be a problem, but long-term exposure to UV isn't good. Also, we must make sure that we don't force dry our ropes. So don't hang it on a radiator, don't hang it near a dehumidifier, and don't put it near a fan heater. We just want it to air dry steadily in a sort of room temperature environment or maybe outdoors in the breeze. So just clip it up and hang it somewhere where it will dry. Okay, give that a day or so because it's going to dry steadily for the first time and we'll come back and sort it later. Okay, so time to measure and mark up the rope. So we plaited it, so we'll chain it, whatever you want to call it. Unchain the rope, pull it apart nice and easily. Take the ends, find the ends. Then probably the best thing to do is to pull the rope through from length. So take in any twists that may have been put into it, any knots that may have been put into it by the washing machine. That should take a few seconds to just pull the rope through. Okay, so now we know that the rope is now completely clean of knots. Then all I'm going to do is just measure it. So I've got a metre length marked out on the desk, and all I do is measure it. Two, three, four. You might want to come back for this later. Okay. Six, seven. Again. <laughs> I mean, seriously, you might want to come back for this later. <laughs> but this way you can edit it however you like. <laughs> Cut! <laughs> no! <laughs> twice now, um, we have 27 metres of rope. When we put it in the washing machine, we had 30 metres of rope. 
So I think that lends evidence to what I said about pre-washing the rope, pre-shrinking the rope, because we've lost 10%, which to be honest is about average for a caving rope. You're going to lose somewhere between about 5 and 12% on your ropes when you buy them new, they will shrink. And that's where you measure it in the nice environment you've got here. So when you're underground, you're not going to be 10% short. Okay, so now we've measured it, we're going to mark it up. So to mark up your rope, you obviously need your rope. You're going to need some tape, usually a colourful tape you can write on. Probably electrical insulation tape will do. Some shrink film that will go over the rope and an indelible pen. So here's what you do. So what we're going to do is just mark the end of the rope pretty simply. You just put a big bright colourful end on it. That's it. That's as technical as you need to get. Smooth the tape flat. Okay, so we've now got a marked end of the rope. So the first thing we're going to do is write on the rope the length. So we need to have 27 meters. Okay, now to me that's the most important number on the whole rope. So I tend to make that quite prominent. Then you're going to put the type of rope it is. So this is 10.5 mil. Okay, and I call it L S K. That means low stretch Kern mantle rope. You'll often hear it referred to as static rope. So 27 meters of 10.5 mil LSK. The next thing that's gonna go on is the date that the rope is gonna be put into use. So I'm just gonna put May 13. That's all you need to do. You don't need to have any more dates than that. Just May 13. Because obviously, the rope itself is going to have a longevity and you need to refer to your manufacturer's recommendations for how long you should have your rope in service for. And of course, there's another few factors for whether you're going to keep your rope in service. In service. Finally, whose rope is it? It's mine. So I'm just writing my name on there. Okay, so... 27 meters, 27 meters of rope, 10.5 millimeter low stretch Kern mantle rope, date of put into use the May the 13th, and it's my rope. So that's it, marked up. Now I'm going to do that on both ends of the rope, that's pretty important, both ends, so when either end is pulled out the bag, we know exactly what we've got in our hands and we can rig from either end of the rope with confidence. Okay. Both ends of the rope are now marked, and what we're doing is we're going to protect the markings that we put on the rope. If we just leave the electrical tape on there with just a few words written on with indelible ink, it'll come off in a caving trip or two. So we're protecting the information by putting shrink film over the top. So it's been cut to size, we just slide the shrink film over the top of the rope, like so. It's just a little slide on sausage there. Then what we're going to do is we're going to shrink that on to the end of the rope. You can use any good quality heat source, such as a hairdryer, or an industrial blower, or you could use a cup of boiling water if you need to. Um, as you can see here, you can use a gas stove. So if you're on an expedition in the middle of the hills, and you haven't really got an extra heat source, then this will do the job. Just gently move it backward and forward, just to let the rope, sorry, let the shrink film bind onto the rope slowly. You don't have to rush things. And notice I'm keeping the end of the rope well away from anything else. And the main body of the rope is away from the heat source. So there's no damage actually happening to the rope. Things are just being gently heated. And you can see that it's not hot enough to burn my hands. So it's not doing any damage to the rope. So now what have we got? We've got two ends of the rope that are marked up clearly. So that anybody can pick this rope up 
and make a decision on whether the rope is long enough and appropriate for the use that they've got in mind for the rope. So the information is, as remember, on both ends of the rope I have the length 28 metres of rope. The rope is 9mm low stretch Kern Mantle rope. The date it was put into use, May 2013, and of course, who owns the rope? So we can fight about it later in the pub. There we go.